Hey everyone, so in today's video, we're going to be going over FRQ number two in the 2022 AP Physics 1 International Exam. This one has to deal with energy, so it's kind of similar to the last one we did. Um, and it also involves a spring, which is uh, interesting. Um, but yeah, let's just get right into it. So in this example, we have a block that is launched um, from a table, from a compressed spring that's attached to the wall, and then it basically falls off the table and onto the ground. And then the graph below that they give us is the total mechanical energy, which is represented uh, over time. And what they wanna do here, it says on the same axis, sketch a graph of the total mechanical energy of just the block. That is the important thing to note. We need to do it ju for just the block here from time zero to time three. So. Let's break this down. So at time zero of just the block, um, it says at time t equals t zero, the block is released from rest. And so when it's just released from rest, it's not going to have any energy. So let's mark that as zero. And that's because even though it is touching that spring, that is spring potential energy. That is the spring's potential energy and not um, energy of the block, right? That's not potential energy of the block. Um, and that's why initially, if you look at the total mechanical energy, um, it is all that is spring potential energy. That's why that is not at zero. Now let's look at T1. T1 is where the block loses contact with the spring. Um, so when it loses contact with the spring, the block is going to have kinetic energy because that spring potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy now. And so we can safely assume that at T1, it's gonna be somewhere around here. And the reason for this is because this little point right here, right? That's also representing that spring potential energy going to kinetic energy, except this one is the total mechanical energy. And if we look at this example, we can see that it is on the table, right? So if it's on the table, not only does it have kinetic energy, it also has gravitational potential energy. All right, let's look at T2. So T2 is where the block leaves the edge of the table. So if it's just about to leave the edge of the table, there's conservation of energy here. So nothing really changes um, at all because uh, there's no friction on the table. All right, at T3, let me just erase this and go back up. It says T3, the block lands on the floor. All right, so a lot changed. The block goes from this initial height here and falls off that table, all righty. So what happens to its energy? Well. A funny thing here is that the total mechanical energy actually um, stays constant, right? Because that is taking into account that um, UG. Except now for T3, that's going to be up here. So let's just connect the points real quick. Like this. And the reason for this is because here, the block is on the floor. And they said here that gravitational potential energy is defined to be zero when the block is on the floor. So now for just the block, that all that uh, initial gravitational potential energy is now represented as kinetic energy. Um, and so we see that increase in energy. Let's move on to part B. So it now says the exact same procedure is represented with block two, uh, which is more massive than the original block. So it goes through the same scenario and is compressed the same distance as before. And it's asking us whether the horizontal distance traveled is going to be greater, less than, or equal to the corresponding distance for block one. So I'm going to change colors to, let's use this green color. So the answer here is going to be less than. And the reason for this is because they are both starting compressed by the spring potential, right? And so this is what I like to consider uh, finite or constant. So it doesn't change between the two scenarios. And so what this tells us is that this spring potential energy is going to be converted to kinetic energy after that block leaves the spring. And so if it is converted to kinetic energy, this kinetic energy is also the same between the two because it is launched with the same conservation of energy. So launch with same kinetic energy. One note being weird again, like always. 
All right, so now we want to observe that kinetic energy, right? So kinetic energy, oh boy, not letting you write. Kinetic energy is going to be equivalent to one half mv squared. And so if this Ke stays constant, what happens to the mass and how does that affect the velocity? So if Ke is constant, this one half is just constant as well. If this mass goes up, we can see that the velocity has to go down since the kinetic energy is also constant. And so combine that with the fact that we know that air time is the same because it's released from the same height, right? Since this is released from the same height in both scenarios, that affects the y component. And so that air time is going to be the same. And so combine those two ideas, and we know that the horizontal distance is going to be less. All right, so now he wants us to derive a general expression for x, uh, the horizontal distance traveled by the blo uh, block of mass uh, mb from the edge of the table to where it hits the floor. Uh, let ko represent the spring constant, and ho represent the height of the tabletop above the floor, and then wants us to express our answer in terms of those variables and physical constants as appropriate. So let's start off with the conservation of energy equation. Um, so that is just... Oops. Energy initial at zero is equivalent to energy final. All right. So what is our initial energy of the block? Uh, sorry, of the system is going to be spring potential, right? And that's going to be converted to kinetic energy. So kinetic energy. So then we can just rewrite this in our variable form. So uh, the spring potential equation, let me pull that out, is one half kx squared, all right? So one half k, which they want us to represent as ko, uh, and then x squared, x is just going to be the compression distance, so we can just call that d, and that's squared, equals ke, which is one half mv squared, so one half m, they want to call it mb, and then v, is just what we're trying to solve for. So what we're going to do is find this V to isolate both sides so the one halves cancel out and solve for V. So we get KO times D squared equals, oops, I just forgot the V squared. So this is the square root of all that. That is a bit messy. Ah, there we go. Oops. And that is equivalent to V. And now we want to use some kinematics because we're talking about horizontal distance. And so it's an interesting problem that's going to be combining kinematics. So let's use this equation to find air time. So Y equals YO plus VOY times T plus one half acceleration the Y times T squared. So we know there's no initial velocity in the y, right? Because it's being launched horizontally off the table. Um, y minus yo is just the change in y. And so the change in y is just the height. So they want us to express that as ho is equivalent to 1 half. The acceleration of the y is g and then t squared. So it's all for t. So 1 half going over would be t, what, sorry, zero, 2 ho over g, and then the square root of that is t. So now we have this. And now we can use another kinematics equation. Let me use a dark blue color. Now we want to look at it in the x direction to solve for horizontal distance. So x equals xo plus vo xt plus 1 half a acceleration the x, t squared. All right, let's see what we know. So the change x minus xo is just the change in x. The change in x, they want us to represent as big X. So we'll just call that big X. So this will be our final equation here. Uh, let's see. So the initial velocity in the x direction, as we said, is this value over here, because that's the velocity that the block is going to be having when it's being launched off the table and that is going to be acting in the x direction. 
And so we can just write all that out here. So that's KO D squared over MB. All right, so we know that one half AX T squared is all just gonna be equivalent to zero. Oops. It is all gonna be equivalent to zero because there's no acceleration in the X direction because some of the forces in the X is zero leading to zero acceleration in the X. Um, so now we just have to multiply our initial velocity in the X by T. And we solve for t already. So we can just multiply these two values, square root of 2HO over G, and that is our final derived equation. It's not simplified, but there is no point on the um, rubric for simplifying the equation, so that does do the job for C. All right, let's move on to D. Does your expression derived in part C support your reasoning? And yes, it does, because we can see here that MO is in the denominator. So MO is in denominator, bad spelling there. Um, so we can see as that M, sorry, MB, as MB increases, right? And this factor or that value right there, what we're gonna get is a decrease in the initial velocity of X. And since, let me write this out. For this, in our case at least, the distance is equivalent to V of X times time, right? That will directly lead to a decrease in the horizontal distance. All right, let's move on to the final part of this FRQ. It asks, is the kinetic energy of block two immediately after it leaves the spring the same as or different from the kinetic energy of block one immediately after it leaves the spring? We kind of talked about this already, but um, it's going to be the same, right? Because you have that finite spring compression. So the spring compression is the same in both scenarios. And that is what we call D, right? And we can elaborate further that due to conservation of energy, EO equals EF, the energy is going to be converted to the same kinetic energy. And we can see that, let me just finish writing this out. I don't want to leave this half written. If we scroll back up, where was it? Uh, in part B, we told uh, you guys that KE was going to be staying constant. And so that inversely led to the increasing mass, led to the decrease in velocity. So that does it for this FRQ solution video. Hope you guys learned something. If you have a question, drop it down below. And thank you for watching.